Hello everybody, welcome to another soil microbiology video. Today we're going to talk about the history of soil microbiology and also about a little bit the, about the history of some techniques that are very key on the study of soil microbiology. Um, start here, of course microbes have been on earth for quite a long, long time. Uh, right after the, the, the Earth starts cooling, 3.5 billion years ago, there is evidence that we already had single-cell microbes. And that evidence comes um, in uh, rocks, that's called, they are called stromatolites. And these rocks are formed by, by um, layers and layers of, of living microbes, one on top of the other. And we, we can date those rocks back to the very early start of, of geological times on Earth. So microbes were really, um, had a really early start on Earth. And we are here only about 150,000 years ago as humans. Um, but microbes have been here for quite long, and longer than any, any other form of life. And they have some quite uh, a, a bit of time to evolve and develop many different features. And uh, humans have been using microbes for quite a long while also, without even knowing. Uh, Egyptians were using uh, microbes, yeasts in special, to ferment, e uh, ferment uh, beer. And uh, also they were using fermented dough to, as a starter for making new bread. And this type of biotechnologies they could not attribute to microbes because they didn't know there were such things as microbes. They could not observe them. Also, uh, we have some observations of uh, root nodules by Vigil in the Roman area, but uh, he co could, uh, couldn't also attribute that to microbes because they didn't know of the existence of microbes because they were too small, too small to be observed until, of course, we had the advent of the microscope. The microscope revolutionized uh, or at least started started the, the, the study of microbes, of microbiology. And um, here we have the compound microscope of Robert Hooke. Um, he made quite a few observations of uh, root uh, plant tissues and, 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 and the micro world, but very few on the microbes. And who really gave the biggest contribution on the microbiology was Anthony, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, who really kick-started all the microbiology subject. And he made like, accurate drawings of microbes and accurate description. And his, he, his microscope was a very simple microscope, weird looking, like this one here on the right, where he put the sample on this needle and he had just one single lens with a magnification of about 300 times. And, and he could, uh, by placing his eye really close to that um, lens, he could observe all that was happening there and he could describe all these microbes for the first time. And um, after Leeuwenhoek, this was um, not really well um, uh, and on on the on the, on the um, not new studies came about until more than a hundred years after them. Um, and nineteen eighteen thirty eight, we have Jean Baptiste Poussignon. He um, studied legumes that fix nitrogen. He demonstrated that legumes were fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere. And we have uh, Justus von Liebig, very famous for the the laws of mi law of minimum which um, uh, talks about the plant growth factors and which ones, uh, uh, how, how they condition plant growth. But he, in, in the areas of soil microbiology, he was the first one to demonstrate the denitrification of ammonium-based fertilizers in soils, which is a bio biological process, a process, of course. And then came Louis Pasteur, which is a um, um, great scientist, um, very famous, not, not only for microbiology, but he, uh, the, the main things he pioneered were immunology, vaccines. And the, the other big thing that he, uh, he, big contribution that he gave was the, the dis, uh, by disproving the, the, the theory, the spontaneous generation of life theory. 
he, he disproved that using his famous uh, swamp, no, uh, swamp neck bottles, which are here on the on the on the left, and it, he could heat up these bottles and sterilize the medium, and no microbes would grow on the same medium after being heated up, and because this swamp neck would provide a dust trap, and therefore this medium could not be inoculated by the air. <coughs> and when he used the, 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 the liquid retaining on the neck, and then, of course, microbes would grow. And then he proved that way that there was inoculum coming from the air that was really bringing life into the system. The life was not being spontaneously generated on these tubes, uh, but it, it was coming from uh, somewhere else. <clears throat> but the real revolution came with Robert, Robert Koch, because uh, Pasteur was doing, not, he was not doing clean cultures. He was doing fermentations with, um, with uh, multiple microbes present on, on, the, on, on the medium. But Koch developed the methods of isolating and purifying microbes, and therefore he could re-inoculate and prove the rela direct relationship between these microbes and diseases and any trait that he wanted to observe. And uh, the famous Koch postulates <coughs> are listed here on the bottom, where, where he could uh, say that <coughs> the specific microbes will always be present in a given disease. Microbes can be isolated and grown in a pure culture in the lab from that disease. And then if you re-inoculate that into a host, they will develop the, 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 the disease. <coughs> But uh, he, he was, the, the biggest contribution was not only the, the Koch postulates, which was very important in a sense, but the, the techniques of growing microbes and, uh, and pure cultures, what, that was a revolution. We now were able to isolate and, and characterize specific microbes and understand their role in different uh, biogeochemical bio processes. And the, 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 one of the breakthrough came from Fanny Hess, which was a wife of one of Koch's assistants. She proposed the use of agar. Before that, they were trying to use only um, other types of gelatines and, and things that would not solidify very well. Uh, but with the use of agar that Fanny Hess uh, uh, suggested, um, they could make very good uh, clean and stable medium for, for, for microbial growth. And also we have here in his group also Richard Petri, famous for creating the, the Petri dish that we use for microbial cultures until this day. <coughs> uh, here, uh, after uh, Koch, we have Sergei Winogradsky. Sergei Winogradsky is the father of soil microbiology. He he studied biogeochemical cycles. He brought the concept of movement of nutrients across the biosphere and the roles of different microbes playing on uh, different chemical reactions, different chemical processes in these biogeochemical cycles. He studied in particular the, the sulfur cycle and the nitrogen cycle and also the oxy oxidation of iron. There is a, a, a nitrifying bacteria named after him, Nitrobacter winogradsky, and um, he also gave enormous contribution for isolating anaerobic microbes, and also be because he was the first one to characterize the autotrophic chemoautotrophic microbes that were non uh, photosynthetic. They were just uh, obtaining energy uh, from from uh, different chemical compounds. Um, so he was he he gave a really huge contribution. Um, and Martinus William ba uh, Bajerink, this is a hard name, ba Bajerink. Um, he together with uh, Winogradsky, he developed the the enrichment techniques that we still use today, and. Um, uh, enrichment techniques when you add something to the to the to the substrate in order to uh, select for some bacteria you, you add nutrients or uh, anything that will uh, 
increase the abundance of a, a specific group of bacteria in the medium and then you then select the bacteria after you enrich that medium. Um, but he also was uh, gave a real uh, great contribution by being the first who make uh, who make peer cultures of um, uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria from roots of legumes. <clears throat> it's important to say though that he was not the first one who observed that this process of nitrogen fixation was uh, a bacterial process. Uh, before him, uh, Liesman, uh, Woronin and Jodan made very good observations about the nitrogen fixation process also. But he was the first one to, who made the pure cultures of this after Winogradsky. And um, we have we have also in uh, 1903 um, Lippmann and Brown um, describing the ammonification process uh, uh, from the nitrogen cycle, and we have Hildner in Germany defining very important defining the term rhizosphere how the the microbe community was so different when it was in contact with the roots and uh, when they were far apart in the in the bulk soil and how the roots were conditioning those microbes and uh, those micro that, that microbial community on the soil and all the processes all the functions that uh, those microbes have also um, we have Ru uh, Russell and Hutchinson in England they were uh, very really important for describing the the trophic cascade between protozoa and bacteria so the protozoa eating bacteria and then increasing the cycling of different elements on that system uh, and in 1910, between 1910 and 1930, we have very important contributions come from uh, Phoebus Levine. Um, he was on to describing DNA. He didn't get the right formula, the right structure for DNA. Uh, he was proposing uh, tetranucleotide, which was um, not the right one, not the right structure. But he made so many important um, uh, advances on understanding the structure. He, he uh, identified the, the, the phosphate, the sugar and the bases, uh, and the order they were placed on, on the DNA and RNAs. And, um, of course, who really elucidated the structure of DNA was Watson and Creek here on, on, on the bottom. Um, Watson and Creek, uh, in 1953, they published in Nature, the, the double helix structure of the DNA. But uh, there is also some controversy there because uh, uh, there's some gossip that they based their, their, their discovery on data from uh, Rosalind Franklin. She showed that data um, um, of, of, of um, uh, X-ray diffraction of DNA and that, that was when they had the Eureka moment of, of uh, understanding that it was a double helix system. But she was never well uh, recognized or, or credited for her contributions on this discovery. Um, um, nevertheless, they, they, they were the ones, the brains behind double helix, uh, Watson and Creek, of course. Uh, we have... Um, in, in the 1960s, more recently, uh, Joseph Gow and Marie Lou Perdue, they were not working on soil microbes or in microbes for that matter. I think it was Drosophila flies. They, they developed the radioactive labeled hybridization probes so they could observe genes and RNA in situ. And the, that technique evolved to be the, 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 the fluorescent probes that we use today, the fish technique, fluorescent in situ hybridization, um, we, really important technique that we use today on soil microbiology. <clears throat> and this photo here on the right is from uh, Carl Woos, who he's, um, he studied the, the ribosomal genes and he proposed the use of uh, ribosomal DNA to make a, a, the, the tree of life, the, the tree of life as we use today with, with uh, uh, ribosomal RNA. And um, he proposed also separation of the prokaryons with, uh, with the uh, bacteria and archaea. Archaea was not well recognized as an individual group. He, he by studying the, the RNA from archaea, he would uh, uh, really well identify that archaea was, were very different from uh, bacteria. And he 
controversially proposed or so the RNA world hypothesis for the early uh, life on Earth where uh, organisms before they developed RNA they were based on RNA <clears throat> before they developed DNA they had uh, uh, RNA based life uh, we have Anhouten Fenselow uh, in 1970s uh, um, using the Malditov MS to identify bacteria and fungi, which is a very current technique. And the, 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 the technique that we use the most, of course, is PCR, polymerase chain reaction, was developed by the Nobel Prize Kerry Mullis in 1983. So I'll leave it here with Kerry Mullis, and, which is the photograph here on the bottom left. And I hope you have um, a good overview about um, some uh, important names in soil microbiology and important names that develop some techniques that we use in soil microbiology. Thank you.